What's up and welcome to another live unboxing. We've got the MSI GT 77 Titan. This is arguably the most powerful laptop in the world right now. And I'm really excited MSI sent it over for review so I didn't have to buy this one necessarily, but after I used it, I actually did go out and buy one. And I was thinking I was gonna keep it as my personal laptop, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk to you about why I'm probably not going to in the end. So, <clears throat> That said, I still think this thing's gonna be an amazing laptop for so many people. And goodness, this thing's expensive. We're gonna go over the price, the specs, uh, where you can buy it, uh, how this stacks up against other laptops today. Um, we're gonna take the bottom off. We're gonna do an internal analysis. We're gonna do some basic benchmarks. We're gonna do, poof, we're gonna do a lot of different things. But the most important thing is we're gonna get our hands on it, right? It's been so long since uh, we've had a refreshed uh, Titan and I'm really excited about this one because it's just got so much juice, 24 core, 32 thread and really high power limits. This thing's gonna be awesome. Uh, Lee Lisi says, finally, can't wait to see this beast in action. I know, right? Like it's, it's, uh, this, this is exciting. So I did um, open the box up and get some drivers installed and play around on it a little bit. And that's partially why I went out and bought one because I really enjoyed my time with it. Um, but I don't want to give any spoilers away. I'm gonna give you my hands on as if I'm going to be experiencing it for the first time. Um, yeah, what do you say we get started, huh? All right, <clears throat> so first up, wow, 25 people already on the stream. We just got started, that's wonderful. Welcome everyone and I would invite you to like the live stream and follow uh, you know, the channel, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in checking out more of my content, catching more live streams and all of that jazz. So this is my laptop ranked list for gaming laptops. This has links to buy just about every gaming laptop currently available on the market. It has some of my thoughts in terms of mini reviews. It has images, it has specifications, it has some basic ratings to give you a rough idea of what about I think of what I think about each of the laptops that are currently out so far. There are a ton of laptops that I haven't been able to update the ratings for yet. You can see they've been added to the bottom. So I've only been able to rate about half the laptops and partially the reason for that is that I had actually got hands on time with almost all the laptops that I've rated so far on the list versus a lot of these other laptops I didn't really get hands on like the, the Nitro 5. Uh, some of them just need to be updated too because I did get hands on some, some of these on the bottom too. I just need to spend some time and go through and fully update the list, but the important thing, the biggest update for the Liaming Laptop list right now is that we are looking at the launch of the RTX 4050, 4060, and 4070 basically tomorrow. And so there's a ton of laptops with those specifications in the mid and lower tiers that are available for pre-order and order now. And I'm thinking I should probably put together like a top five or top 10 uh, laptops in the mid-range budget range type of a video here coming up pretty soon. Um, Cause there's a lot of decent options out there and there's a lot of choice Choices people are making right now about the mid-range and entry level laptops. Um, let me just point out a couple of my favorite right now. Um, at least the, the, they feel like they have some of the most potential. So if, right here is an incredible bang for the buck option. The Gigabyte G5, you got an i5 12500H with an RTX 4060. Um, only eight gigs of RAM. 512 gig SSD, a full HD 144 hertz display, and if it's as good as the last Gigabyte G5, it was actually a pretty good display for the money. It was like 300 nits, but this is $1,100 right here, and it's that's a pretty great bang for the buck. You probably want to upgrade the RAM though. Um, I did order one of these, so we'll get hands on with it um, coming up here soon. I'm really excited about that one. There's another one, the cheapest uh, RTX 4070s. Let's go over those right now. So the cheapest RTX 4070 options, uh, you know, those go, look at, the, look at the price range on the 4070s, right? So the most expensive ones, the Blade 16 4070 costs $32.99. And then the cheapest one for the same graphics card costs $14.99. So there's such a huge price range on the 4070 and it's really not much faster than the 3070 Ti. It's basically a 3070 Ti uh, in terms of raw rasterization performance. But when it comes to uh, frame generation, you do get some advantages there. So depending on how much, you spend on it, it could be a really good value or a really mediocre value. Um, so anyway, I've got a, I've got an MSI Katana that I ordered. I'm not too hopeful that it's gonna be amazing, but it's it seems like a decent deal. 
Um, I think it's gonna be a lower wattage if I remember correctly, like 105 watt on this guy, but it's very thin, very light, under five pounds. So I'm excited about uh, checking out that one. The, the other one that seems really promising is the MSI Pulse. So this guy is a, uh, a fairly high wattage option, right? It's got an RTX 4060 in it, um, and it's uh, 140 watt from MSI. So $14.99 for that guy. I think you spend a little bit more, you can jump up to a 4070. So those are kind of some of my top picks right now to consider. We don't know exactly all the details or how well they're gonna perform in the, uh, once we get them in, but they are out there for order now. And yeah, the other thing I'll point out is that the QHD version of the 4070 MSI Pulse is probably gonna be a potential worthy upgrade because the, the display quality is so much better um, on their QHD. It's 100% DCI-P3 color gamut on this laptop, um, well maintaining that 140 watt TDP. So yeah, this one looks pretty promising. I don't know about the price tag of $1,899. I kind of wish they had the lower end CPU and charged more like $1,700 or $1,600 for it. Then it would be really easy to recommend this one if it actually benchmarks as well, uh, benchmarks as well as I thinking as well as I'm thinking it's going to benchmark. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So um, just checking in with chat here. Um, all right. Melm has a dead a dead emoticon for fifty two ninety nine. I know, right? This thing is this thing is a beast. So in general, chat, I invite you to ask as many questions as you can about the GT seventy seven. And I think this thing is going to be just a really epic high performance machine for the enthusiast, basically, you know? So um, let's go ahead and get into this. I am really excited. Um, here we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and change camera angles. So here is the Titan. Notice the box. We've got Titan on the side here. Got this nice um, emblem, Titan Series GT. More MSI logos and Titan embleming. Um, let's open it up and see what's inside. Now, notice that you know we did open this up a little bit before, but um, okay. Here we are. Now you can get this for forty five ninety nine with an RTX forty ninety with lower end memory, and uh, just know that. Just know that. Um, that's probably the spec I would recommend of the GT77 if you can get your hands on it, but there's not been very many online sales of that 40, uh, 4599 version. So I'm waiting for more of those to be available. And I'm also really interested in the QHD version of the display for this Titan. So there it is. There is the beast right here. Um, notice the metal top lid. This is plastic. Wait, is it metal? This might actually be metal on the back end here. Yeah, I think that might be metal. Um, but then this is definitely plastic. That part is plastic. Um, plastic on the hinges. And if you flip the sucker upside down, we do have a plastic bottom chassis with a metal section right here. So this part's metal, this part's plastic. So we've got a nice mixture of metal and plastic. And there's, it's an interesting choice that they went that route. Uh, just know that probably the number one reason they did is because the uh, thermals on a plastic chassis, not only are they transmit less heat, so it's a little bit easier on your fingers, on your keyboard, um, and that the whole laptop doesn't become a heat sink when you intermix this metal and plastic like this. So that's probably their reasoning behind it. Um, let's go ahead and pull the laptop out and see what else is in the box. So, Inside here we have our Mama Jama, the big guy. So this thing is a huge power adapter, one of the biggest on the market, 330 watts of power. Um, and it, I just wish that the power adapter was smaller, more efficiently done. I really love the Razer power adapters this year. Um, so there's the power adapter cable. I suck, pull this out, it's like a full six, link, uh, six foot long cable. And this one is about a four foot long cable right here. So, all right. What else do we have in the box? So, we just got a, a, a bag for the cable here. It looks like inside of here, there's nothing, just packaging. 
Um, let's check what's inside of this. I actually haven't looked inside of here. All right, so inside of this sleeve, we've got our warranty information. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus a little bit better. All right, so limited warranty summary. Um, it's a 12 month warranty. And it is a limited warranty and it's not transferable to any other party. So only the original buyer of the product gets the warranty. So I'm guessing if you get this laptop, whoever registers it first is I'm guessing who's gonna get the warranty, but, but yeah. Um, all right. We are here to help. So MSI has customer service helpline information with a telephone number right here on the card. I love that. Like, I, I don't know how, it says 24 hours a day, uh, Monday through Friday, um, but they're not available on weekends. But that's interesting. I should actually, I'm, I'm tempted to call them and just see how long the wait time is, <laughs> you know? Like, kind of would be interesting to find out. So we got a little laptop guide here indicating what the ports are um, and all of that. It's pretty straightforward though. So let's go ahead and get the laptop turned on. All right. So there's that guy. And here's the laptop, beautiful. Um, let's go ahead and open it up. Shwam! And notice the nice microfiber cloth that you get with it. You can use this for cleaning the black exterior, trying to make it look all juicy and nice. Um, now, I wanna point out these stickers suck. I actually, um, I actually decided to take the stickers off of the GT77 that I got. And man, was it a pain in the butt to get the goo from the stickers fully off. So MSI, please stop putting these stickers on the laptop chassis. That is my request. We all are, do if you do put them on here, make sure that the glue is very light and easy to remove for the end user. You don't want to leave goo on a like a, a laptop that costs as much as a car, okay? That's just not cool. It's not a premium experience. We don't appreciate it. All right. Um, so, taking a look at chat. All right. Screen is a 4K mini LED thousand nits. Not as good as OLED, but still fantastic. Yeah, I totally agree. That, that the, Between the screen and the keyboard, that was what inspired me to go out and buy one of these to potentially use it as my own laptop. Um, the primary issue I ran into was just screen response time in eSports games was not as quick as I want. So that was that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to buy it initially before, and it turned out to be true. So I wasn't wrong, but I was sad when I had to retake my laptop hard drives out of the GT77, um, and I've gotta, I have gotta return that sucker. So, oh well, that's okay. It's uh, not that other people can't enjoy this laptop. I think this laptop's gonna be fantastic and so many people are gonna love it, but it's not a laptop that's great for eSports gamers unless you wait for the QHD 240 hertz version of this laptop, because they are gonna come out with a display that has a faster response rate. And then that laptop is probably the laptop I would consider owning. Yeah. All right. So let me go ahead and get this plugged in. All right, so, oh wait, you know, we're gonna take the bottom off first. As always, first step in these unboxings, we remove the bottom, so let's do that before we plug it in and turn it on. All 
Um, this monster is coming. I'm so I'm so long waiting for it after this live streams. Go ahead, Gizmo, with a heart plus. No problem. Thanks. So, uh, by the way, there should be an ability to join the channel. There should be a memberships uh, a channel option now. If you can look at it and confirm that you, you have available, that would be great. Um, but uh, that's going to – basically, members of the channel are going to have an opportunity to buy review units that I purchase for review on the channel. Um, so I'm going to resell those to people who are members of the channel. So if you've been – Wanting a Strix G18 and it's been sold out, then uh, that might be a way to get a Strix G18 because I'll be selling the one that I bought from Best Buy to uh, back to viewers. So, all right. So for taking the bottom off, you're going to need a uh, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, and that's about it. Uh, that that that, and maybe just like a spuger tool, like a plastic tool. Um, so, starting. Let's reposition the camera a little bit. All right. So we'll start taking these guys out. And you definitely do want a, uh, a, a magnetic screwdriver for this guy because it's gonna be hard to get the screws out if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver. Basically impossible. So there should be a link in the description down below if you want to check out the um, the iFixit toolkit that I use. It has all kinds of different screw heads along with a really good screwdriver that's magnetic. Now, no join button. Oh, Britt, is there a join button? I don't know. Okay, uh, Lexa says there's a factory seal screw also. Yes, there is. But uh, I wouldn't worry about that, I don't think, because uh, basically, what are they like? They they're uh, by law, I believe, they're required to honor their warranty, even if you open it up. It's more just a way for them to confirm a user was in there, but only if they actually see and suspect you actually damaged it could they deny your warranty. If there's evidence that you you were the one that damaged it, then maybe they would deny your warranty. But I mean, I've opened up the bottom of my laptop and then still had service at like two or three different manufacturers now. So if you run into troubles, let me know and I can make a video about it. <laughs> so, because you should be able to. Um, you should be able to open your laptop up, make basic modifications, and still have your warranty covered. Brett Allen says there is a join button. Okay, cool. Very nice. Yeah, Alexa says there is. So the way that the way the review program's going to work is it's going to be um, like a first come first serve type of situation where the people that, that sign up um, are going to be able to get get access to a list to be able to get on a wait list to be able to buy the laptops that I review. And I'll, I'll be signing the laptops um, if the person wants it. Uh, and I'll sign the bottom of the chassis or the inside of the bottom of the chassis if they want it hidden. So, okay. So this this factory screw does not want to come up. Come on. I don't know, I think the... Uh... Come on. I had troubles getting it off on the other GT77 that I bought too, but I got it out. I think there's just maybe a little bit of the paper fell down there or something. I don't know, it's loose, it'll probably come up. Let me try just flipping the laptop over. There we go. Okay, so I just had to flip the laptop over and it came off into my hand, no problem. All right, so next up. Next up, we are going to uh, carefully pry the laptop apart. And this one is snapped together pretty tightly. So you definitely want to use plastic tools. Do not use a metal tool. You will damage the laptop and you will be, you will be a sad panda. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to use the toothpick or the guitar pick style first to get this thing started. I'm just deciding on which side I want to go on. 
Let's do this side. Yeah, and there's one downside to this laptop. They don't really have a good starting point to get the laptop chassis started. I wish they would make it easier to get inside this machine because this kind of machine is definitely one that a lot of people are going to want to be getting, you know, into. So I got one guitar pick in on this side. I'm going to get a second guitar pick out so I can hopefully continue this. There we go. Starting to get once you get it, once you get it popping up, it's it's not too hard, but just getting that initial pop up without damaging anything is the tricky part. Uh, Linneman Alexander don't understand why some manufacturers like MSI and Oris stayed 17.3 inch 16 by 9 when everyone else went to 18 inch 16 by 10. So MSI also went to 16 by 10, but they went with a 17 inch, like the GE 78 is a 16 by 10. Um, but I think the reason why MSI decided to stay, I, I haven't, I haven't actually officially asked them, but if I were to guess, I believe the reason is because of the display options that are available, uh, for the 17.3 is going to be uh, higher end. Like this 4K 144 hertz is not available in a 17 inch display. So, and they wanted to have arguably the best gaming display in any laptop in this GT77, which they basically do aside from response rate. Um, you know, being able to be a high refresh rate esports screen is just not this display speciality, unfortunately. So, Okay, so we've got three quarters of the laptop chassis apart. We've got to take it to the back side now. And there we go. For those who don't have a, a pick, a plastic knife works too. Uh, yeah, you just got to be careful. Don't use metal. I made a mistake when I was early on opening up chassis uh, I was like I don't want to damage this but I'm just so mad that it's taken so long to get this thing up so I decided to use a little metal uh, screwdriver head and my goodness I gouged that plastic so bad <laughs> um, so this last part can be a little tricky and I'm trying to remember the best way to get this thing to start coming up. I believe it disconnects right underneath. Right, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use the blue tool, kind of pry it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna get the guitar pick in underneath the plastic and voila. Pretty much loosened up the whole back in one little run there. You just gotta be gentle with it. You don't wanna break anything. Jonathan R says, this thing is legit as much as my car is worth. <laughs> no pressure opening that thing up, LOL. I know, right? You're like, one mistake and you end up damaging it. Ugh. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's not too bad of a laptop chassis to open up. But it's, it's far from the best, I'll say. Like, they, they really should improve how easy it is with a pop-up screw or um, something. But at least... At least the chassis itself is, is very snug fit. So you know it's like not going to be popping out on you or, or whatever. So there's the internals. Woo! It's a beautiful internal setup that we got going on on this laptop. Huge battery. I believe this is a 99 watt hour battery. Yes, it is. Uh, Lexus the Impaler, welcome. You're the first member. So I'm going to put that into a Google Sheet doc. Every time someone becomes a member, I'm going to add that to a Google Sheet so we can track who uh, was a member first for anyone that ends up wanting to buy one of the review laptops. So let me go ahead and just... So basically, it'll be a first come, first serve type of situation, though the uh, upper tier members uh, will be able to get like a pass to go to the 
front of the line or whatever, or get like, I think it was something like they get to cut half of the line or something. I can't remember. I'll have to review exactly what I put in there. But welcome. Thank you for becoming a member. Uh, Lexus Impaler. Okay, cool. Congrats. You are the first member. Woo. All right. So continuing on, let's go ahead and get this camera positioned so we can do a more detailed analysis of the inside of this laptop. All right, so. Ooh, wow, there are so many heat pipes on this thing. It is amazing. <laughs> Basically, this whole thing is, is all heat pipes. It's pretty incredible. Um, all right. Sweet, okay. Here we go. All right, so left speaker, right speaker, and the speakers on this machine look and sound like they're they're really high-end speakers. I really like the sound of them. Um, and we'll get to test them here in a little bit, okay? So we got our battery connector right here. We have our memory cover. Uh, and I'm not gonna worry about taking off the memory cover, but there is four sodium slots in here. Um, so you can actually uh, use them. I believe they are 4,800 megahertz uh, sodium memory slot, or they're 4,800. DDR5 4800 um, memory, but they have to be downclocked when in this 128 gig uh, setup. So yeah, and I'm curious, one thing I'm very curious about is if you don't need this much memory, would you be able to put in like say uh, DDR5 5600 uh, RAM and just go to like 32 gigs? I'm curious. I think that would be, probably give you a little bit better benchmarking potential if you don't need that much RAM. Okay. So left and right speakers, 95 watt hour battery. We have our PCIe, PCIe Gen 4 SSD slot right here. Another PCIe Gen 4 SSD slot right here. This is a, uh, I believe a two terabyte default SSD. Um, and then we have our PCIe Gen 5 SSD slot right here. And this is one chassis that can take and this chassis can take double-sided SSDs. I was able to put in both of my eight terabyte SSDs into this for a total of 18 terabytes of SSD space, um, which was just phenomenal. Um, yeah, so Wi-Fi right here, and it is a Intel Killer AX1690i Wi-Fi adapter, and our heat pipes Right here, we've got uh, crazy heat pipes on this thing. Let me check chat real quick. Um, all right. All right, so some reviews are saying the Razer 4080 18 inch is close to the MSI GT77 performance. No, it's not. I'm pretty sure the GT77 is still gonna be faster, but it's, it's close, I guess. I mean, close is true but it's especially for GPU performance, they're pretty close for CPU performance. The GT77 should be like way faster. Um, all right, so for our heat pipe layout, we've got one dedicated to the GPU, two dedicated to the GPU, a third shared heat pipe between the CPU and GPU, a fourth dedicated to the GPU that goes to the right side that works on these two fans, and then another little one that goes around to this side. So that is one, two, three, four, five heat pipes to the GPU. And for our CPU, we have one shared heat pipe between the CPU and GPU, uh, but three dedicated heat pipes just to the CPU. And notice also our fan layout is phenomenal. Um, back here, we've got a huge fan, two huge fans, and then two smaller fans. And this allows for uh, just incredible temps in games and in benchmarks. This thing is just just free, pretty freaking insane. Um, Mike Mishler says, Brandon, I'm seeing a lot of people comment on having software issues and BIOS issues with all the new laptops. That is very common uh, for new generations of laptops because uh, you know new architectures require new drivers, 
you know, games need to update their drivers uh, to be compatible. They need to optimize their, their games for the new hardware, um, especially when you're dealing with something like frame generation being thrown into the mix. Um, and then, you know, new laptop designs require new BIOSes and the new BIOSes might have bugs that need to be fixed or updated and all that. So that's very common and I'm not at all surprised about that. Um, all right. Victor says, some games are having issues running on the 4090. They're glitching. Seems like updates will be in the near future for sure. Um, yeah, that's like I said, it's basically the same thing. There'll be driver's updates. This is going to be um, improved. Gaming performance, the GT77 uses liquid metal. I'm still not sure. I've asked MSI. They didn't answer the question. And then I've had one reviewer claim that they use liquid metal. And then another one say they used a type of CPU paste. And uh, regardless of what they use, the cooling in this chassis is really, really um, phenomenal. So um, at least it was on the other unit. So we'll take a detailed look at the benchmarks and uh, we'll do some time spice on the bench and we'll do some gameplay as well. So don't worry, we'll get into that. Um, so yeah, that's the internals. This machine uh, I think is pretty efficient with their internal spacing and they just have this incredibly complex heating solution. Um, I'm, you know, I'm curious, you know, th I think this is the best thermal solution that we've seen on the market so far. I'm curious if a vapor chamber cooling solution could actually outperform this complex heat pipe array, but I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty interesting though. All right. So let's, yeah, so someone said, Sergey says they use something like the Honeywell PTM 90, uh, 7550. Yeah, that's something that I had heard as well, but I want confirmation from MSI or for someone to take it apart and verify that. Um, just cause uh, one of the other tech reviewers did claim that it had liquid metal. So um, I don't know. We'll find out, I'm sure eventually here, someone's gonna take it apart. I'm 100% I'm confident that's gonna happen pretty soon. Um, the Razer 18 has screen flickering issues with the Intel software. Yeah, I did uh, hear that. Uh, my, I believe the Blade 18 came in today, the mail, came in the mail today, finally. Um, it is, I have been waiting for that sucker now for like over two weeks. And uh, so now we gotta get this thing put back together and Honestly, I'm tempted to, to actually try the Blade 18. The biggest issue for me with the Blade 18 is gonna be the lack of a number pad. And the keyboard just in general feels a little bit cramped, I think. Um, okay, so, very important to get all of these plastic bits to snap back together. And it can be a little tricky when you're re-snapping back together the back area as well. So, And the way I'm doing this, I'm just gonna go in around the circle looking for any areas that are not snapped in and making sure that they do get snapped in before I put the screws in. And I noticed that this one right by the vents on the side does not like to snap in all the way. So you gotta kind of push on the outside of it. I just gotta snap in there. Um, and then the back also, uh, there's like a little ridge that you gotta make sure that the, the, the thing snaps together properly on the outside. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so this needs to actually go. Yeah, it's, it is tricky getting this to go back together. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws back in, but not tighten the screws all the way. And then uh, once the screws are in, I'm gonna try to get the back, the back ridge to re-pop back together. Um, you might actually want to start with the back ridge, getting it popped together first. If the GT had a 240 hertz OLED screen, I would consider it. Yeah, that's very true. Um, just QHD 240 hertz, just 240 hertz anything. I would, I would definitely be owning a GT77, I think. Um, I just wish 
I just wish the uh, the existing 144 hertz display was at least a really fast response rate display. Um, it, I don't think it is that quick of a response rate, so. Like, it, it's not so bad that you can't play casual games. I just wouldn't want to play eSports games um, primarily on the display. That's that's pretty much it. But the, the display is, like, mind-blowingly gorgeous. Um, you'll see in a, in a bit here when we get that sucker turned on. This thing does not want to... There we go. Okay. All right, so we need to not tighten this down all the way so we can get the back to pop in for us. All right. <clears throat> yeah, Lexus the Impaler says, that's disappointing to hear. I play mostly eSports also. It's not that you can't play eSports on this, on this uh, display, but it's just not, like, optimal for that, you know? So, um... And it, yeah, and it's just, it's got us a little bit of ghosting from my experience. Um, but there is supposed to be a panel overdrive mode, which I could not find. Maybe I needed to do an update on it. And maybe that would help. All right. Okay, so I got that one to pop in. Come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, pushing up from the bottom is how I'm getting them to pop back in. Not pushing down from the top, pushing up from the bottom. Okay, so I think we're all snapped back in now. I just need to tighten the screws down and we're good to go. Um, notice that it is taking a bit longer to take this laptop apart, I think, than the average laptop, but it's not horrendous. Display overdrive is in the MSI center. Yeah, I, I did not find that option, the display overdrive, but uh, I want to test this today with the overdrive option and see, see what it's like. All right. Okay. Bingo. Let's get it fired up. Yeah, update the MSI Center. I had updated to the latest option. So, I have pressed the power button. It'll be nice if these laptops have a wall brick that pushes the GPU like a full PC, because some are still weak when plugged in. Interesting. Um, I don't know really what you mean, Ras. Like the 330 watt power adapters are enough. Uh, how big is the power brick for the GT77? It's a big guy. Um, I did, I did um, show it earlier in the live stream. Just gotta go. Wow, it's just black, freaking bright. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so we gotta agree to the privacy policy here. Uh, we got to update the MSI center. There was a time when there was a double power brick. Dude, I know I had a double power brick, okay? I've had a double power brick with a GT77, a Clevo chassis, and an Alienware Area 51M. So I've done the double power brick before three times. And uh, my goodness, that 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 is a pain in the butt. <laughs> so... Uh, if you want full power on, on the go, you have to like haul these two giant power bricks. Okay. Typher Gudra asks, why does it have a big space behind the screen? That's a great question. So um, right here we have this uh, like abutment or like a rear end. It's got a nice bootie, y'all. All right. A nice bootie. Um, this, this thing right here is where a lot of those exhaust fans and fins are located. And... Uh, basically, if I can hold this up for you, you can see um, right here, well, 
I have to open it up. Right here you can see the LED light is in here and you can see all of those fins in there. Just tons and tons of fins inside of this rear. And uh, that's where a lot of the heat pipes are as well. So that's predominantly where the thermal cooling solution is. And I wanna point out, this is Windows Hello. When I point this up in my face, boom, it's in. Windows Hello has worked flawlessly and really, really well for me uh, when using the GT77 so far. Um, you could get a single PSU from Eurocom to replace the two power bricks. Yeah, I was gonna do that, but it was gonna be like $500 for just the double power adapter. It was like a 500 watt power adapter still. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, Valerie, Valerie says, uh, mine's on the way and it's about $6,000 on, and on this machine, my real worry is cooling. Oh dude, this thing has phenomenal cooling. Um, it's really, really impressive cooling. Uh, so oh, I got to try to get the Wi-Fi attached here. Hold on y'all. So let me go ahead and switch this over and oh my goodness i forget how awesome the keyboard is <laughs> it's so nice i really love the keyboard on the gt77 it is just who it is so it is so nice to type on um so let me show you some of the, the keyboard lights so we'll start with aqua let me zoom in on the keyboard so you can see the keyboard here. I'll also do our... We'll do our flex test while we're at it. All right, so uh, first we're going to do... So this is uh, plain right now. You can just select the color that you want it to be. There's aqua. This is like a flowing water type of a look. I do like that one, it's pretty cool. Aurora, which is like the Aurora Borealis color scheme. Um, I think it looks really good, but I like a little more color in my, in my color schemes. Chakra, this is my jam right here because you get like the whole rainbow of the, all the different lights. And uh, then Default, which is just this crazy hodgepodge of colors. Um, and I want to point out that you can see these keys. They are so bright in this brightly lit studio environment. Um, if I turn the lights off and uh, let's see here, what can I do to up the gain right now? It's a little bit low on the gain here. And let's see, this guy, no. I think it is this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So look at how bright these keys are. They are extremely luminescent. Um, so going back to Aurora and Chakra, the, it's just so vibrant and interesting to look at these lights. Um, and they're, they're very visible even in a super bright environment, which is not true for all of the backlights this year. Um, like these are distinctly brighter than the... Uh, this is Dragon Shield, by the way. Um, this is distinctly brighter than the Scar keyboard backlight, for sure. So, uh, Freeway. So this one has uh, the lights going sideways, a little kind of creative and fun. Um, so again, there's Plane and then Rainbow Split. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to leave it on Chakra. I like that. And let me show you the back of the, the keyboard. All right. Or sorry, the back of the laptop. So that's what the rear light looks like. And let's go over some of the different settings. So you can set it to, uh, this is Aurora. This is Blue Flash. Chakra, again, Chakra is what I would probably set it to most of the time, I think. Um, you have Default, which is just multicolor craziness. And you can disable it. You can also do Dragon Shield. 
Macaw. What is that? Oh. It's just kind of a pulsing light. And then there's also Rainbow. Looks pretty good. And yeah, and then there's a uh, plain. So that's just where you select one color. And uh, I want to also point out that you also have this logo right here. And when you change the lights on this, uh, I believe it also changes the light on the thing. Yeah, so this matches the back of the rear light, whatever you have. Uh, I've got a plastic cover on this. Let me go ahead and take that off. All right, so pretty cool light setup. I think uh, from a light RGB perspective, this is one of the better looking RGB implementations overall. Um, though it's not as cool looking to the user, I don't think. Um, for example, you know, like the SCAR, uh, the SCAR series, you know, a lot of those lights are facing you. The Legion series the lights are facing you. The GE78, the lights are facing you. The Mystic light on the back of this is facing other people. So it's, uh, it's a little bit different approach. So, all right. Sweet. Okay, so let me switch my mouse over to this machine. Oh, let's go over the ports before I do this. All right, so on this right side, can you see okay? Let's see here, all right, so. Bingo. We have a USB 3.2, a Thunderbolt 4, a Thunderbolt 4. Um, I believe one of these has power delivery, a mini display port, an HDMI 2.1, and then we have our two and a half gigabit ethernet, our fan exhaust, on the rear, entirely fan exhaust. And on the far side, we have our power adapter. We have our power adapter, two more USB A's, so 3.2, 3.2, and then a full size SD card slot where I was getting about 90 megabits per second with my fast USB, or my fast full size SD card slot. It's like a I was getting about 180 with the Alienware and about the same for the Razer. Unfortunately, this is a little bit slower full-size SD card slot than those, but it's still faster than using the USB-C cable uh, on the camera. Now, the headset port is also here. It's a combo port for microphone and headphone in one. So the ports overall on this machine are uh, only potentially beaten by maybe the Alienware M18. I think other than that, uh, there's basically no other laptops that match the ports on the GT77. Um, they're really phenomenal. Okay. All right, so we are ready. Do, do, do. This, every time it goes to a white screen, I'm just like, ah. So uh, I wanna show you guys something with the MSI color. So this is the MSI true color. And let's go ahead and reposition the camera to be pointing right at the display again. True wham. All right. Okay, so let me get something. I guess we'll use this. All right, so this is the MSI background um, that comes with the laptop. You've got uh, movie mode. Let's close this top over there. You got office mode. You got display P3 color gamut mode, so it's like a very vibrant looking mode. 
And Adobe RGB, which is uh, supposed to you know display more of the RGB, Adobe RGB. sRGB mode, which is what it was in out of the box. Anti-blue mode, which kind of adds kind of an orangish tint, so it doesn't uh, remove, it basically removes the blue light focus of the display. And then gamer mode, which I really love the colors of the gamer mode myself. Um, okay. All right. So, MSI, let's just skip this, there we go, okay. So, this is the MSI center. You can see your CPU usage, the GPU usage. Um, you can clean up the disk, free up your memory. This one comes with 64 gigs of RAM, which I thought this was 128 gig, but it's not actually. Um, the features on it, you've got uh, gaming mode, which basically I believe turns off the touchpad. You can change the lights, so they change the, the you know, to match the game, whatever game, like cyberpunk-ish lights when you're playing. It's pretty minor. Uh, I probably would not really focus on this. I might let it do its thing if it's got a cool setup already. Um, one thing I really appreciate about the MSI Center is it lets you completely change your, your mode. So notice that I can switch it over to be uh, entirely integrated graphics. So if you, if you don't want the NVIDIA GPU ever turning on at, at all, and you just wanna maximize your battery life, you can switch on the NVIDIA graphics mode, which is basically going to let you maximize that battery life and prevent the NVIDIA GPU from coming on at all. The hybrid mode does not use advanced Optimus. It, it does let you switch between NVIDIA GPU and NVIDIA Optimus, but if you're gaming at 4K, it shouldn't affect your performance very much. Probably between one to like 5% on the high end. And that's probably why uh, MSI did not include the the mux you know this does have a mux switch so you can switch to dedicated graphics mode but it's probably the reason why they didn't include advanced optimus because 4k resolution just doesn't benefit from having advanced optimus as much now i do wish they still included advanced optimus it's kind of silly that they didn't so um but this mux switch is the way to go unless you know that you're going to be in um battery you're, unless you know you're gonna use the battery for more than like an hour, then you're gonna to wanna to switch to integrated graphics mode. In general, I would probably just be switching between discrete graphics mode and integrated graphics mode, but uh, you could use the hybrid mode as well if you uh, want to be switching between the GPUs on the fly. Um, so it just depends. Yeah, so Valerie, I thought this was the 128 gig, but it turns out that it was only 64. So I'm sorry about the, the, hard, uh, the hardware incorrect information, but know that this will have identical performance except for the, the RAM, all right? So this would be the $45.99 version. Um, okay, so here we are in the general settings. You can turn on the Windows key on and off so you, can act, you won't accidentally press it. You've got the switch key between the Windows button and the FN button. So if you want to use the FN button instead of the Windows button, um, because of the way they are positioned on the keyboard, uh, you've got the Windows over here and the FN button positioned over here. Um, let see if I can focus it. So FN's over here, Windows is over here. You can switch them so that you can press this button to get the FN function, um, which is kind of a nice advanced feature. Not very many laptops have that. And then, um, at least built into the software. You can turn the webcam on and off, and there is actually a physical switch right here. You can cover the webcam, but that does, I'm not sure if you can see that yet. This thing's so, whoop. sorry everyone. So sorry to your guys' ears there. Um, but uh, so at the top up here, you can see there is an actual physical button. Right there, you can see the, the physical button. You can slide it over to the left or bring it out. And that does prevent Windows Hello from working because uh, it uses the same camera. So I just leave the privacy shutter open uh, if you want Windows Hello to work. So 
Um, yeah. Now, uh, you can switch the GPU mode here as well. You can put it on, you can activate a crosshair on the display. You see the, the little the, the crosshair here in the center. Not sure if you can see that. Um, I did find it to work really well though. And uh, you can also adjust Windows HDR settings. You can turn it on and off. So I just turned HDR uh, enabled right there. So now we have HDR enabled on the display. Um, you have display power saver setting, which this sets your display down to 60 Hertz refresh rate uh, if you want to save power when you unplug the laptop. Then you have the USB power share, which I believe allows you to charge USB devices when the laptop is asleep. So it keeps the USB uh, A's alive so you can keep charging things. How loud are the fans and decibels? You'll see here coming up when we get benchmark in here very soon. Um, so you can also change this so that you can switch it to hibernate or to go to sleep when you close the lid or press the power button. So right now it's just set to go to sleep instead of um, hibernating fully. Notice that there is no uh, display overdrive option in here. This is where it would be if it was available. Um, you also have a dark mode, which is probably what I would recommend <laughs> for people using this because it is so bright in light mode, okay? Um, so we're going to uh, go to our user scenarios now. Notice there is an AI, uh, there is an AI based option. You can see it's a smart AI. It's supposed to switch between these different modes for you on the fly. And, um, but in general, I'd probably be either using balanced or extreme performance or silent. I don't know, it's, these actually work pretty well from my experience. When you go to silent mode, it, it really keeps the laptop silent. Like right now, we were in balanced mode and the laptop is completely silent. Nothing's spinning up. We're not doing anything on the laptop. It's not under the load, so it shouldn't make any noise. Uh, if I go to extreme performance, um, I don't think it's gonna come on loud as long as you don't uh, set it to cooler boost mode. But it's gonna be more sensitive. Like even if you're doing lighter tasks, the fans will come on pretty often um, just to like always keep the temps on the GPU super low. Uh, if you go to cooler boost mode, that's gonna turn on max fans. And here's the max fans coming on now. Okay. Um, and if I were to guess, I would guess the decibels are about 60. 58 to 60 on maximum fans. You got four, four honking fans going with this machine. So um, it's to be expected. All right, we're just gonna put it back into auto for right now. Now, I have not done uh, all the steps to get Intel XTU to allow me to uh, undervolt and overclock the CPU, but I'm going to be doing a follow-up live stream showing you all of the steps on how to undervolt and overclock the GT77, because I want to try to push this thing and see how high of a Cinebench score and Time Spy scores we can get on it. So that expect that live stream very soon, all right? Now, um, let's go ahead and just put this sucker into cooler bus. What else do we want to do? Okay, I want to show you uh, details before I turn before I turn this beast loose and make the thing really loud. Let's go over the display, do a display test on it, and see what kind of brightness we get in the uh, with my Spider Five Elite. And let's go ahead and do our flex test that I was talking about doing. Uh, let's back this sucker up a little bit and. Tilt it up. All right, so flex test, going around the sides first. Very, very rigid. Okay, a little flex right here as we get to the touchpad. Like I, I would say it's like not perfectly rigid here. I wish it was a little bit more rigid here. Um, this is a metal top deck, by the way, for the keyboard deck um, with a plastic underbelly to help prevent the top deck from getting as hot. It makes it feel pretty premium. All right, so going over the things here again, almost no flex on the corners as usual. We're getting a bit more flex around the middle and around this touchpad. I wish this was a little bit rid more rigid, especially for as expensive a machine as this is. Um, we got our speaker grills on the left and right. And along the top, got a little bit of flex here, not extreme flex, but it's it feels pretty solid when you're actually using it. When you're pressing down this hard, you definitely get a bit of flex, which, 
Again, getting, being such an expensive laptop, you kind of would hope it'd be a little less flexy. Um, that said, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, another thing I want to point out is we do have a fingerprint sensor right here. And it has worked pretty much perfectly every time that I've used it. I've probably used it about seven, eight times now. Um, all right. Uh, Mike asks, Brandon, can you answer this question for us? What is the laptop 4090 and 40 equal, 4080 equal to in desktop performance? So a, a laptop 4090 is basically a uh, lower wattage RTX 4070, uh, 4080 basically. And it's like, a, it's like a desktop 4080 on a lower wattage. So it's gonna have less overclocking headroom and less initial performance. Um, and it's really gonna be competing very tightly with like a desktop RTX 4070 Ti um, for the most part. You're gonna be just a little bit under a desktop 4080. Um, overall, the performance I think is truly excellent for a laptop. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and do the display test and see how many nits brightness we get for our measurement. I'm expecting, I think we're going to get 600, I think. Let's find out. Because the way, the way HDR works, I don't think HDR is going to be compatible with the Spider 5 Elite. So yeah, it, in terms of... Uh, an RTX 4090 laptop, it's going to be equal to about a 3090, uh, 3090 Ti desktop, um, depending on the wattage and what you're doing with it. Um, or, you know, like a 4070 Ti uh, desktop or like an underclocked 4080. Um, there's a lot of things that could theoretically be equal to. But it's in those ballparks. Of performance and it kind of blows me away because you know I had a desktop um, I had a desktop RTX 3090 the last uh, couple of years and I'm like now I can get that level of performance right here <laughs> on this laptop I'm like it's like crazy to me it is crazy So Daniel Schmidt says 600 SDR brightness and 1,000 nits brightness uh, HDR. That that is the correct specifications. It's just it's just weird. Wow, it's so bright. Um, it's not even fully white background. Yeah, and it still just hits your eyes like, bam. Um, Uh, JCO says, can you try a deep black wallpaper to see how black it is? Yeah, I do have a, uh, I do have a all black image. Let me just go ahead and copy that over. All right. So here is, oh, it's 16 by 10. Let's kind of zoom in. There we go. Okay. Wow. That is... Wow, I don't see any backlight bleed at all. Like, is the display still on? <laughs> it is. That is impressive. I, I know that's kind of reflective in here, in this room, but I don't know if you can see, but I, I'm not seeing like any backlight bleed at all. Whew, mini LEDs, yeah, it's true. Mini LEDs, it's really impressive. All right, we're gonna be pulling up the code here. And let's go ahead and switch it over to this one. So I gotta type in my code for the Spider 5 software.
Um, there we go. Uh huh. I got not say it. I can't say it out loud. <laughs> uh, I'm like reading the key out loud into the stream. <laughs> it's not the way you keep a key secret, right? All right. All right, so we're gonna do our color gamut and brightness and contrast test. And we'll see how we do. Start the test, all right. I gotta make sure the brightness is all the way up. It should be. Yeah, okay, the brightness is working and we are at 100% brightness. Um, we are also, I just wanna clarify, we are in the gamer mode right now. Um, maybe we should go into like the, oh, true color is detected, HDR is on. Okay, so you, with HDR on, you can't, um, with HDR enabled, you cannot have different gamer modes or whatever, so. Um, so it's in the HDR mode right now. All right. Whew. It is. Just look at the color of my face <laughs> as it changes. <laughs> it's like my whole face is lit up by the color. It just is just pretty crazy. Uh, Daniel Smith, I did notice there's a little bit of clouding. Yeah, uh, it depends though. Like right now I'm not seeing any clouding, but then you go over a really dark area. Sometimes you see a little bit of halo um, on the display. So we need to set the brightness to zero. All right, we're gonna measure. All right, now we go set to uh, 25% measure. PC is very buggy for Hogwarts. Hopefully more patches fixes it. Um, if it's stuttery for you, my number one recommendation right now is to turn down your textures. Um, it takes up a ton of VRAM to play Hogwarts and a lot of people with mid-level GPUs are just not gonna have enough VRAM to handle the, the textures on ultra or high. Um, another thing you can do is play with uh, DLSS on a lower setting. So the render resolution is lower that can also reduce the amount of textures that you need. So if you uh, are stuttering in quality with low textures, you could also try tuning DLSS down to like uh, performance balanced or something or ultra performance even to reduce your texture usage even further. And that might result in uh, better, less stuttery performance in Hogwarts. Uh, CL says, these videos are great. Thanks for all the effort you put in. You make it so much easier to choose a laptop. Uh, gutted, I can't keep watching live, but looking forward to seeing the rest tomorrow. Thanks for so much for stopping by CL. Uh, and thanks for the nice words. They encourage me. Um, whenever you guys are really positive with me, it really helps me um, keep going. <laughs> Cause sometimes you don't feel like continuing in life and what you're doing sometimes and that's okay. It's okay to have those moments, but you just gotta keep going and putting in the time. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. So there we go. We got our first test. This was with HDR enabled. Um, interesting results. So going over here, I'll scoot this over to the right a little more. And, uh, so we got 94% of sRGB, 81% of Adobe RGB and 83% of the P3 color gamut, which is 
a bit surprising, right? It should be uh, more colorful than that. I'm guessing it's because in HDR mode, you lose some of that. Uh, in the brightness category, we started out at 33 nits brightness at our zero lowest percent and 753 nits brightness at the highest end, which is higher than what the rated 600 nits SDR uh, brightness is supposed to be. The contrast ratio, my goodness, 753,000 to one <laughs> contrast ratio. What? That is, uh, is that the highest contrast ratio I've tested with the Spider 5? I don't know. I think, I think it might be. Now let's go ahead and take uh, HDR off and test it one more time. Um, I'm curious if we're going to get uh, a different result with HDR disabled. So let's go into settings. I think we probably will get a different result. Click this HDR button, you go to Windows settings. You can turn this off, you have to turn this off in Windows. So we're gonna turn off HDR and we're gonna go to our true color and we'll set it to, uh, I don't know, let's let's do the P3 color gamut preset, presetting, okay? So this is gonna basically color, uh, color correct your screen to focus on the P3 color gamut, I believe to, sh to show the most of that as possible. Um, so we're gonna test again. All right, so we're gonna put this right over the center. Press okay, there we go. Uh, can you try that black wallpaper again with the dim light in your room? Um, gotcha, well, I can tell you JCO, there is basically no backlight bleed at all on this unit. Um, and I know that, it, I have these backlights going behind me and like the projector behind me and that's kind of messing up the display reflection. Um, so um, I don't think, I don't think you're gonna see any backlight bleed at all, even if I turn all the lights off. So, um, all right, so we're ready to do the next segment. So we're gonna set our brightness to zero. Measure. All right, we're gonna do 25% now. Uh, the screen may look washed out only because of maybe the RGB lights behind me or, or whatever. Um, so Lexus the Impaler says, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, thanks, Giz. These videos are great, man. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Uh, Dane B says, I assume that the contrast ratio was so high because the white point was 7,400. I don't know. I'm guessing that is, uh, I believe you're talking about the white balance and uh, that's whatever is being handled from Windows and the MSI drivers because I haven't modified the white point. Um, so no, I'm not sure. I wouldn't call myself a display calibration expert. I'm pretty well versed in it, but I'm not... Um, I'm sure some of you guys in chat are even more experts than me. Gigabyte also has a 4070 OLED, but low power. Yeah, the Aero 16, I did get hands on with it. And uh, it feels very premium and nice in the hand, but yeah, it's not really a dedicated gaming laptop because it's also only a 60 Hertz OLED. If you go with the Aero 14 OLED though, it is a 90 Hertz. So that's pretty nice, but you're also only, I think getting an RTX 4050 in that unit and it's very low wattage. Okay, so now we're measuring at 100. The ZenBook 14 Pro has a 120 hertz OLED 4070. Ooh, that's, that's pretty nice too. I would probably consider reviewing that. Um, those, those feel really nice too, in my opinion. All right, so our color gamut is a lot better now that we turned off HDR. You can see uh, we got 100% of the sRGB, 90% of Adobe RGB, 92% of the P3 color gamut. 
And like I've said, I usually say every time with the Spider-5 Elite, uh, this is actually underrepresenting what the display really is because of the Spider-5 Elite's limitations. Um, with another display checker, I think we'd be pushing over 95%, at least in the P3 color gamut and probably Adobe RGB as well. Um, potentially even all the way up to like 99 or 100% coverage. Um, yeah, so brightness wise, wow, it's actually brighter with HDR disabled. And our contrast ratio is still insane. So at 0% brightness, we had 36 nits. Uh, at 100% brightness, we got 783 nits SDR. That's pretty freaking bright. Very insane. Contrast ratio, 783,090 uh, to 1. Our white point was at 8,200. All right. Um, very impressively bright display, very, very vibrant. I'm very impressed with the display overall in general, except for its response rate. It just doesn't feel like an ultra fast response rate display, which is really what you're looking for when you're playing uh, focused on esports games. If you want the esports games with the GT77, go for the QHD 240 Hertz. That's my advice as someone who bought the GT77 hoping to play esports on it. And uh, I, I'm definitely not recommending that for most people. Okay, so we are ready to uh, we are ready to do our Cinebench run. Let's go ahead and get our user scenario set on extreme performance. This is gonna be out of the box settings, no undervolt, no overclocking, just setting it to max fans. That's it, and the highest profile. All right, everything else is stock on this thing. Um, all right, and I'm gonna, when I'm actually gaming on this, I'm using it, I like the gamer profile the best. So we're gonna switch to gamer. And uh, then I'll close this, I'll close this, all right. And interesting enough, when you're on extreme performance and you're on cooler boost, okay, now it's on cooler boost. Okay, I was gonna say, it should be higher. The fans should be a little louder than this. Um, all right. So under, did I, did, did I bring this over yet? I did not yet. So we need to copy over Cinebench R23. I heard that the 3070 Ti is pretty comparable to the 4070, if not better in some aspects. Uh, Tim, that is correct. It's very similar in terms of raw performance, but without any frame generation um, technology. So that's the main difference. So if you've got a cheaper 3070 Ti, the main thing to keep in mind is a 3070 Ti is going to be uh, just as fast pretty much as a 4070 Ti, except ex assuming they're both high power limit GPUs, uh, but you're not gonna get frame generation technology. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make a video talking about that, I think probably tomorrow, I'm not sure, we'll see. I'm gonna try to do a video on it. At some point here, though. How good do you think the 35 watt 4070 will be? There's a 35 watt 4070? Oh, goodness. I thought 45 watt was the lowest end. <laughs> I, I mean, it'll probably play games if it can actually go that low in wattage. It'll probably still play games, but I don't anticipate high value for your money. Um, that's for sure. Okay, so extreme performance mode. We've got, uh, let's just get HW info open. Do I have that on here? I gotta copy that as well. All right. And like I said, we're gonna do a undervolting overclocking live stream for this laptop that'll be focused on that aspect for the GPU and CPU coming up. I'm hoping tomorrow we'll see if I feel up for it, but I think I'm gonna try to do some prep testing tonight and then we'll try to do that live tomorrow. Um, and we're gonna see what kind of performance we can push out of this thing, all right? So, um, so let's go ahead and do a advanced benchmark, no long duration. Let's see what we get. 
Are you going to set it to G discrete GPU mode only? Uh, yes. It is already set to discrete GPU mode only right now. The screen is flickering. Oh, and you can't see the whole screen. Okay. So right out of the box, no tuning at all. We've done nothing. 32,377. That's insane. That is the highest out of the box score we've seen out of any laptop that I've tested so far. Out of the box has varied from like the Alienware M16 being like 14 or 15,000 uh, to being, I guess, I think the Asus was about 29, 28, 29,000 in that range uh, for the Strix G18 and SCAR18. But uh, obviously those machines did a little better once we undervolted. But this thing with no tuning or anything happening out of the box, it's getting over 32,000. So 30, 31,900 that time. Um, did you change the screen from back from 60 hertz mode? Maybe that's why it feels sluggish. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. It doesn't feel sluggish to me. It's definitely not in 60 hertz mode. It's in 144 hertz mode. Um, let's see what we're pulling on our, our CPU and GPU. So... Our voltage offset you can see is set to nothing. There's no undervolt. Um, well, we push up to 195 watts of power. All right, so checking out our voltages, wattages. 178, it was 160 seconds ago, 168. 155, 163. 160, so it's basically just sipping on that uh, wattage at about 160 something continuously. And that's, we're getting right around uh, 31,000 now with HW Info open and having continuously ran it. Uh, notice our core temps are 81 degrees now after several, um, after several runs. And I have not lifted up the back of the chassis yet. Let me go ahead and do that. As I do for every laptop I test, I lift up the back of the chassis just uh, a little bit with my SSD enclosure, which is only like about a half inch. So, all right. Um, it's pretty crazy that in one generation, a laptop is competing with the best available desktop from last gen. Yeah, it's totally true. And it's true for CPU and GPU this year. Okay, so I wanna try an out of the box 10 minute test and see what we get. Um, again, this is all stock with an undervolt and with raising the power limits, I think we're gonna be able to really push the performance on this guy uh, to another level, another little bit higher. Um, so, Let's see what we get for our temperatures, our, our core clock averages. Right now you can see we're doing 185 watts, 175 watts, 177 watts. Um, and so we've got our full on turbo boost going. Our core temps are 82 degrees. Our CPU package temp is 94 degrees. Um, our CPU package power now is 160. It was 145 for a moment there. Um, 166, 151. And looking at our average clock speeds, during the initial higher turbo boost period of time, we were pulling 4.2 gigahertz um, on average, which is really impressive. Um, the, the tricky part is now that we're in the long form, we got the long power limit. You can see that we're, we're pulling 152 watts there. It was kind of 151.8. Um, so you can see that we're basically hitting the long power limit at this point. And we did heat, we did hit thermal throttle just a little bit there. And that's where an undervolt is gonna help us out a lot, I believe. 
So, yeah. You probably need to change the turbo mode to be longer in the BIOS. Uh, yes, and also you undervolt it, and then I think we're looking at much better temperatures in general. Also, I want to note that it is kind of warm in my room right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan on to the pushes air into my little studio room to be a little bit higher end, a little higher blow in power. Um, so our average temperature so far on the package has been 94 degrees and 84 degrees on the core temps. So that's very good. That's below thermal throttle and that's pushing 150, 146 watts on average during this test so far. It's interesting, our wattage is dropping down to 133 right now when I think it should be a little bit higher. I wonder what's causing the, the voltage to drop. Now our average core clocks are actually coming down a little bit there. I guess now they're right at four gigahertz. So this is pretty close to what the Asus laptops were pulling um, overall. Uh, for between the Strix G18 and SCAR18. In fact, I think this, the Asus uh, laptops are doing just a little bit better than this one, actually, um, when it comes to after we undervolted them. So that undervolt definitely helping boost performance a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised if this machine ends up performing a little bit uh, below the the Asus Strix G18 and SCAR18 without any additional tuning. So with the additional tuning, I'm, that's what I'm hoping we're gonna be able to really push the performance more. Um, am I giving away laptops after? No, I'm not doing any giveaways. Uh, Lynn Chester says, XMG would be interested. It will be interesting with the water cooling. Uh, yes, but you gotta keep in mind with the XMG laptops with the water cooling, uh, it's focused mainly on the GPU. The water cooling loop no longer goes over the CPU directly, so it's only the indirect heat dissipation from the shared heat pipes. It does help boost CPU performance, but not by like a lot. It's really the GPU th where the water cooling comes in and uh, really helps boost the performance. Um, Sergey Zemensky says temps are too high. Uh, yeah, LSP says, I suppose this laptop is heating up the room. Well, it's partially that and partially my projector. So I've got a projector projecting against the wall that can kind of heat up the room. And I've also been live streaming now for a couple hours. And uh, my, my Legion 7i is also helping heat up the room. So combination. Oh, and I've also got a desktop with a 4090 back there also helping heat up the room. So I've got a few different things uh, putting off heat. Uh, Winter Mute says, a very strange decision, <laughs> by the way. I'm not sure which, which decision you're talking about. Um, I mean, it's a desktop CPU and a laptop, like, damn, yeah, basically. It is, it's like a, a, a tuned down i9-13900K. So, yeah, and I am really excited to see what the AMD 7945HX does, the Ryzen 9 7945HX, because... If there is a CPU that can potentially beat this one, it's probably that one. That's, that's, that's the only one really from AMD this year that can compete. Um, and I think it has a real shot at potentially uh, taking, taking it down, especially in something like the Alienware M18. So, cause that's gonna supposedly have really high end cooling and I'm hoping that it has really good CPU cooling as well. Um, utilizes a vapor chamber for the CPU and GPU on the Alienware M18. Um, with that Ryzen 9 7945HX. Fingers crossed, it's gonna be amazing. We also have the Asus Strix SCAR 17 and Zephyrus Duo 16, which, is, which are gonna come in here. And I've got, um, those both have the 7945HX Dragon range as well. So I'm looking forward to testing those laptops as well. Yeah. Uh, Britt Allen says, if I join, how easy would it be to cancel? Uh, you can cancel at any time. You don't have to, uh, it's, you can cancel any time. But if you do cancel, then you fall off the wait list for the review, review unit laptop list, basically. So um, right now there's only one person on the membership. So whoever signs up next will be number two 
Um, so, yeah. Uh, it would be interesting to see a comparison uh, with the Raider. Yeah, I've got a Raider coming in this week, actually. So I've got a G. Hold on. So, guys, I know the audio is going to suck here for a little bit, um, but we're recovering. My camera overheated. So, we're going to unplug this guy and let it cool down for a little bit here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and switch the, I'm going to switch the batteries out. I'm working on getting a solution together for this so that we don't have to worry about things uh, you know, disconnecting as they overheat. Um, but it's a matter of it's a matter of time here. I just gotta spend some time getting it figured out. All right, so taking a look at our average temperatures, all right? So our average temperatures have been uh, 84 degrees on the core and 92 on the package. Our average CPU package power has been 136 watts. So we are not pushing as high a wattage as I would like to see for this, this GPU, or this CPU, sorry. Um, especially given everything, all the promises that MSI have given us. Um, that said, I wanna see what it's like when we raise the power limits and do the undervolting. I still think it's gonna be significantly outstripping what the ASUS does um, after we undervolt and tune the CPU. Um, so be sure to subscribe and come back to the next live stream and when we test that, when we go the undervolting route and, and test that out. So, uh, no, it's got a A7, my camera is not a Canon R5, it's an A7S Mark III. And right now I'm gonna give it a, a little bit of time to uh, just cool down, because it was overheating from the laptop blowing. My laptop's blowing on it basically, and it's causing this camera to overheat. I need to get a uh, Sony FX3 camera, which has active air cooling, and that will prevent the camera from overheating, so. So why is this laptop so expensive, Gizmo? It's uh, expensive for a number of different reasons. It's got a 4K 144 hertz display. It's got the highest end CPU and GPU. The $52.99 version of this laptop has 128 gigs of uh, RAM and a four terabyte SSD. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty insane. But those are the main reasons that, you know, the display, it's like the first 4K 144 hertz display in a laptop that I've ever seen. So between all of the different features on it, including the extreme cooling solution, I'm anticipating uh, that's the, the primary drivers of the price, the specs plus the price. Um, that said, I'm thinking the performance on this can be even better if you were to reapply the, the CPU paste, as I'm pretty sure that the unit I have actually had a little better temperatures than this one that we're looking at here. Makes me wonder if I were to bust out the one I, uh, the one I bought and do a side-by-side -side testing it, see if we have any difference in performance and temps, but I suspect this is good enough to run Minesweeper. I don't know, man, that's a pretty taxing benchmark. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so the fans are pretty loud. We're using the onboard camera mic right now. So, our out of the box Cinebench R23 score for this laptop is, dun dun dun, 29,243 for our 10 minute test. That is a little bit disappointing to me that it can't sustain at a higher power limit out of the box. I was hoping it would be over 30,000 out of the box with extreme performance, but this is with no undervolting. This is without any raising of the power limits. And that is obviously excellent performance, all things considered. So it's hard to complain too much, but it's just not quite what MSI promised us. So that's kind of the only thing I'd say about that. It's not quite there. Yeah. Lexus the Impaler says disappointing. Yeah, like I said, not quite what they were promising. Let me go ahead and try to switch the microphones back to the way they were. One second, guys.
Okay, so let me know if the mics are better now or not. We should have better audio now without as much focus on the fans. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, we're going to be doing an undervolting and overclocking session with this laptop coming up very soon. So if you'll, and there's a few steps you have to take to be able to undervolt and overclock this sucker, like disabling a few of the features in Windows and changing some BIOS settings. So you're going to want to, if you want to potentially overclock this laptop in the future or overclock some of the other ones, you're probably going to want to watch that because, yeah, you have to disable several things in Windows to be able to turn it on. Okay, so... Bada bing, bada boom. Let's go ahead and open up our Steam. Let's go ahead and open up Time Spy. Li maybe Liquid Metal would take it up a notch. Uh, oh, I think definitely. Um, I think if you had Liquid Metal, a really good application of it in this. That would definitely help boost the performance. All right, getting my Spider 5 put away. Zoom out. I think that's good. All right. And I just, I want to comment again on the display. It is just so vibrant when you look at the whites, like this Time Spy window compared to the darker background. It is, it is just incredibly vibrant and glorious to look at. Um, and I want to, can you see any glow around this mouse? I don't, it's hard to tell. It, yeah, it's pretty glorious though. Oosh, boom. So, look at this. Can you guys see my face? Just look at my face, all right? Boom, and then, boom. <laughs> it is very, very bright. <laughs> and that's not even a completely black screen. It's like another background right now. Um, okay. All right, let's see what we get in Time Spy. Let me make sure that Afterburner is running and the display is on. It is. And, uh, well, let me see if Afterburner is going. I don't think Afterburner was going. All right. And, uh, okay, so we're going to set our memory clock. I had a bit of an overclock going, testing it. So I'm going to set our, uh, our GPU... We're setting a zero, uh, zero clock speed, zero memory clock. So everything's just stock out of the box um, with max fans. Let's do it. Interesting. I'm also noticing on the stream, it's kind of, you can kind of see some lines in the display. I don't see that in real life though. It looks perfect in real life. I think it's just how the shutter speed is. Have you run Time Spy Ultra? Uh, no. Let's go 23K GPU score. Um, out of the box, I don't think we're going to quite get to 23K out of the box, but with a slight overclock, we'll push over 23K. Nobody in this chat has the money to buy it. That's not true, I show face, because there's several people who, uh, who have said that they've already ordered this machine and it's coming in the mail. They're waiting for it to get here. And I know some of the, my viewers have actually already got their GT77s in. So. Terrence Bryant says, yeah, I've got one. Yeah, exactly. Are you watching the stream on it? <sighs> okay. So, taking a look. 
at our stats here. At the top, you can see our boost clock is 2200 megahertz. And I want to point out that the SCAR 18 was only doing about 1950 to 2000 megahertz. So right now with no overclock at all to the GPU, we are already pushing 200 megahertz higher than what the RTX 4090 SCAR 18 was pushing. I also want to point out our GPU temperatures are only 55 degrees. Our wattage here is only listing at 170 and it hasn't, I don't think it boosted to like 175. And yet, despite our wattage being a little bit lower, our boost clocks are better than the SCAR 18, which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I don't know. I was seeing 175 when I, when I applied an overclock to the GPU. So it's, I don't know. We're getting better performance at slightly less wattage. It doesn't really make any sense to me, but um, yeah. Dane B says, do you think that the lower 4 a.m. 4 a.m. speeds could be affect some of these scores? I'm not sure what you mean. 4 a.m. Uh, I remember hearing when you go up to 120 gig, it lowers the speeds. Yeah, I believe. I believe what you're talking about is the RAM speeds. And yeah, the DDR5 uh, 4000 megahertz RAM in this unit uh, may end up negatively affecting the speeds by a little bit. Um, so especially in CPU bound memory sensitive games, you might end up with slightly less performance than if you had like DDR5 5600 or 4800. Um, hard to say how big of a difference it might be. I'm guessing between a few percentage points on average, but some games might be as high as 10 or 15 or 20% uh, performance gains for like some esports titles here and there. But those esports titles where the memory speeds are gonna make the biggest difference you're gonna hit 144 FPS in those games easily. So I guess maybe Warzone might be the only one that you wouldn't hit that kind of fresh, uh, that kind of performance, I don't know. Um, so again, pointing out our temperatures, our CPU is pushed up to 65, 68 degrees, I think was the highest I saw, but our GPU is still hanging out at 62. That's insane. That is phenomenally cool on basically an overclocked RTX 4090. Let's see the laptop overclock to the point of blue screen. Stability can go out the window. I want to see 2.5 gigahertz. Yeah, that's kind of the idea I want to do for the uh, the overclock live stream tomorrow. So uh, notice that we're pulling over 100 watts on the CPU, and we only went up to like 70, 80 degrees. On, I mean, it's a short test. It's not really a great thermal test for that being that short, but... Um, yeah, okay, so our out of the box, no overclocking score, zero overclock. We got 22,541. That's phenomenal for an out of the box score. Um, you add a bit of overclock to that, you can easily push 23K, maybe even 24K. We'll have to see. Come back uh, tomorrow or whenever I do the uh, overclocking live stream and we'll see how high we can push these scores, including the CPU score. I think the CPU score could definitely be a bit higher if we raise the power limits on Intel XTU or whatever uh, power limit raising tool we're going to use. I think we're going to use Intel XTU. Um, but I think the CPU score could definitely go over 16,000. And our GPU score, I think we'll be able to go 23.5 at least. Hopefully 24K is my goal. If we can push to 24K, that would be amazing. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's hop into a game. It's time for Hogwarts. Chow pa chow. Okay, we gotta, we got to sync our cloud so we get our saves and then we'll go ahead and do our two test runs and do a, a little bit of a mission so i'll be right back time to get my hogwarts robes
Okay. Ah. <laughs> yes. Let's go. Hoo hoo. All right. So let's take a look at our settings. Um. So we're in 4K. Realistically, you could do you could run this game with no DLSS, but your performance is going to be noticeably reduced, especially if you have ray tracing enabled. Um. So you. You could do DLSS on quality mode, which sets it to basically 2560 by 1440p. But I think realistically, most people would probably run a 4K panel in DLSS on balanced or performance mode. Um, especially when you're upscaling only on a 17 inch display, it's hard to see those and DLSS uh, artifacts. So I think DLSS on balanced or on performance mode is probably the way that most people would do it. Um, that said, we do have ray tracing enabled right now. And we'll do our initial test with ray tracing enabled, then we'll turn it off. Um, so, sweet. Brit Allen became a member, let's go. Woohoo! I'll put you down. As number two, Brit, you're, on the, you're number two on the list, my friend. Thank you for becoming a member. All right, so here we are. We are in the Hogwarts main hall. Uh, we got to run over here. Okay, so we want to go to Central Hall first and do our test in Central Hall. Let me go ahead and straighten the camera up just a little bit. Perfect. All right, and uh, oh, we didn't do a speaker test yet. We got to do that here. I'm going to turn the speakers on. Turn the sound up. And the speakers are quite loud, but when you got the fans running on maximum, it's not great, you know? So, all right, so. Is frame gen on? Yes, we have frame gen on, DLSS on, uh, I believe it's on, is it performance? Balanced. DLSS unbalanced, frame generation enabled, everything's on ultra with ray tracing enabled. Okay. So we're going to do a run. This is at 4K. All right. 4K. And you can see it is, it's, it's pretty smooth. Our 1% lows are doing really good right now. Better than normal. Usually they're dropping down to like two or something because it's Hogwarts. All right, so at 4K, DLSS unbalanced, frame generation on. We got 90 FPS, 9031. Uh, let's go ahead and change everything down to a QHD resolution, QHD plus. Um, so to do that, we're probably going to need to switch. Um, we're going to need to change our base resolution in Windows and reload the game. So before I do that, let me switch over. Let me switch over to the Hogsmeade save and we'll do a run up that section. All right. Yeah, this thing plays really, really well right now. Um, Hogsmeade, though, if it, if any place in this game can bring it bring us to our knees, it's going to be Hogsmeade. All right, so we're going to run up here real quick. Um, I usually have to do this twice. Whoa, our one percent lows are not terrible. This is surprising. Usually our 1% lows are much worse than this. It's actually playing relatively smoothly, you know, assuming we're only getting 80 FPS, but still our 1% are only 33, so 31. So it's way less stuttery than I have experienced on other laptops, which is interesting. We've, our, our overall TDP is not as high either. Um, it's less CPU bound here. 
I think it's because we're higher resolution, so we're more GPU bound than CPU bound. Also notice our temps are actually pretty good. Our GPU temps are 85, our CPU is 82, so that's pretty great considering uh, SCAR 18 in this section did get very spicy up to 100 degrees. Um, CPU bottlenecking. I don't know if it's CPU bottlenecking. It's more, I think, GPU bottlenecking. We are not hitting our 100% GPU utilization, but I think it might be memory bottlenecking, actually, because I don't think the CPU is being taxed all the way to the max. Okay, so uh, let me do an official run up this section, and then we'll restart the game and change the resolution. Okay, so we're running. This is very smooth. Good quality gameplay, at least. All right. Boom. So we got 8023 for our official 4K run or whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and restart the game. Switch it to QHD so we have some comparable benchmarks to compare with the SCAR 18 and uh, Strix G18 with the 4080 and 4090. Uh, so we need to go to our display. We're going to want to change our resolution. Why is the resolution hiding? There it is. Okay, so we want to go to 2560 by 1600. So this is going to make black bars on the edges of our display, but it's going to let us test at the exact same resolution. So that's good. Is that VRAM or desktop RAM? That is VRAM. Uh, I don't think both are on there, but their VRAM is in the top left. And we were pulling, I think, 12 or up to 12, almost 13 gigs of VRAM. So, one percent lows are probably horrible on other laptops because of VRAM bottleneck. Yes, definitely true on the 4080s unless you set the, uh, the the textures to low, which I've been setting the textures to low on those. I don't know why all the new laptops are sold out. Not all of them are sold out. Actually, uh, there's quite a few that are in stock or available for order. Uh, you can check my laptop list right here. Um, you can see there's a lot available for pre-order that are going to be starting to ship tomorrow, uh, especially 40, 50, 40, 60, and 40, 70 laptops. And then if you're wanting um, higher-end machines, some of those, the very best ones are sold out, but the second best, third best ones, those are pretty available. I know the Aura 17X, the GE78 with a 4080 is available. Um, and you can order some of them that are like back-ordered. You know, like the, the Blade 16 is available, the M16. Um, it just might take a little while for you to get them to ship out. A lot of laptops are sold out, though. So if you're looking to figure out which ones are actually available for order, check the laptop list. It'll let you know all of the, uh, the details you need to know. So, okay, so we are at 16 by 10. We're going to change some of the graphical settings. And uh, we'll do a couple of benchmarks and... All right, so we need to set this DLS to quality now that we're at QHD. Frame generation is enabled. Everything is on ultra. Everything's on ultra. And ray tracing's on ultra two. So here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll do it. We'll run up there. If our 1% lows are actually still good, then I mean, I usually do a run up, but maybe we don't need to anymore. This is this is not stuttering. What the heck? This is one of the only laptops I've ever tested that has almost no stuttering in this game. Like our really bad 1% low stuttering is just doesn't it's not happening right now. I love it. Okay. So 10337 with ray tracing enabled. Um And if we switch back over to Central Hall, let's test ray tracing enabled in Central Hall, QHD, everything enabled. Okay. Don't buy a 4070, it's not even faster than a 3070 Ti. So the trick is you don't buy a four, uh, you don't buy a 4070, that's the same price as a 3070 Ti, because it all comes down to pricing at this point. To me, a 4070 
is equal to a 3060 in terms of tiering. So uh, it all comes down to how NVIDIA is trying to price them. If they're trying to price them like 3070 Ti's, definitely don't buy a 4070, but they should be pricing the lower end 4070s as equal to a 3060, in my opinion, based on the tiering that, that NVIDIA's released. So, because they added the RTX 4090 into the mix this year. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this test now. Wow, our 1% lows are really good. Okay, well, I accidentally clicked the mouse. <laughs> Let me restart this again. Okay. All right. Uh, Felix, this is not the place, my friend, to uh, to beg. So. Oh, hold on. All right. So let me know. Is that uh, is it working now? Test. Okay. Cool. So we're gonna have to start this again. The battery ran out of juice, so I had to return the battery on. All right. Here we go. We're running through Central Hall, out to Transfiguration Courtyard. And into Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower, 11938. Uh, that's with ray tracing enabled. Now let's go ahead and see what we get when we disable ray tracing. So no ray tracing. We're going to apply these settings, and we ought to restart the game. I think the SCAR-18 got just a little bit less than that. I think it got like 110 or something. Love the boost clocks. Yeah, this thing is boosting really well, especially considering we have no overclock on it. Zero overclock and still hitting the really high boost clocks is phenomenal. It should, it should churn out some nice extra FPS overall. Um, Felix asks, what should I do? I don't know. I'm just frustrated and confused what to do. Man, I'm going to give you some life advice here. All right, you got to take it to heart. You need to take responsibility for the things that you can control in your life and fix them to the best of your ability and let go of the things you cannot control and try to find a path forward for your future. Take the steps now to ensure you have a better future two years from now, five years from now. If that means you need to do training, you need to go to college, you need to start studying something or working under someone else, just start trying to find a path that'll make your life better in the future. Live the now for a better future. That's my advice to you, my friend. And asking for money or help in a live stream chat is just not going to get you anywhere. So, and uh, that's, that's my advice. Take control of your life as best you can. Uh, and yeah, all right. Okay, so we have ray tracing disabled now. Uh, let's just double check our settings. Everything's on ultra. I'm tempted to throw textures on low, <laughs> but we'll not do that for now. Um, DLSS on quality, QHD frame generation enabled. Notice our temps are also really good still, all right? Um, our wattage, wow, our boost clock is 24 megahertz. Our wattage is pretty low though. It's pretty interesting. All right, so we're just gonna run out here real quick. Um, all right, that's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and run back. All right. Okay. Um, it feels interesting to me. 
I don't know. All right. So I, I'm trying to remember what the SCAR 18 got in this test. I think, I think it was 175 or something. And so we're getting only 131, which is a bit low. I'm wondering if it's related to our uh, lower speed memory. I don't know. Interesting. Only 125. This is, isn't this less than what the Strix G18 got? Well, look at our, our FPS average now. It's 180. How do we only average 122 through there? I, that's very odd. And it makes me want to retest this for sure. I don't know. That's very weird. We should be getting higher FPS than that. I, I would think we were getting, should be getting higher FPS than that. Our, our wattage is very low on the GPU and our utilization is low. So I think we're getting CPU bottlenecked perhaps from our memory speed maybe? That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, or maybe we need to raise the TDP power limit on the CPU. That could also maybe be related. I don't know. But I, this is underperforming compared to what I was expecting. And uh, the Asus laptops are just putting up better numbers in this, in this test. So pretty, pretty dang interesting. All right. We're not running at 4K. No, we're running it at QHD 16 by 10. So you can see QHD 16 by 10 DLSS on quality. Noble Zenith with the $2 donation. Uh, test 4K DLSS, no tracing. All right, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that test. And then... Uh, we'll do that test to end the stream, basically. All right, so 4K... Keep changes. All right, so we're at 4K. DLSS is on quality. Why our DLSS rendering resolution is not set correctly right now? Maybe we have to restart the game. I don't know. Let me try turning it off entirely. Yeah, we got to probably reset the game to get it to reset correctly. Thank you so much for the $2 super chat, Noble Zenith. And thank you so much to... Uh, Britt Allen and Lexus Dan Paler for becoming members as well today. All right. So we are set to 4K. We'll do this last test just because uh, Noble Zenith gave us the super chat. Might as well anyway. QHD, or sorry, 4K uh, quality, no ray tracing. We'll see what we get. Um, Linchester says, yeah, probably CPU bottleneck at lower resolution. That is true, but it's also, I, I don't think we were seeing that kind of CPU bottlenecking in the other machines. We were pulling higher wattages, honestly, with the CPU in the other machines. And, um, and we were getting higher FPS overall with the Asus Strix G18 and SCAR18. So, to me, it's either we need to raise the power limit on the CPU or we're being bottlenecked by the RAM speed. Mm, those are the two things that, that come to my mind initially. There could be something else, though. Um, all right, so let's test 4K DLSS on quality. 4K DLSS on quality. Uh, Benny Ben Plan says, love your stuff, man. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Benny Ben. Keep on playing. All right, so DLSS on quality. All right, and frame gen on. No ray tracing. Let's see what we get. All right. Here we go. Up to the door, through the door. The one thing I will say is our 1% lows have been excellent on this laptop. Even if the average isn't as high as what I was hoping. Oh, I accidentally hit nine instead of zero. I think it was 109 though. Let's let's restart it. Um, 
The 1% lows on this is the best we've seen on any laptop. Maybe Hogwarts went through an update that improved our 1% lows. They optimized the game better. Or maybe it's something inherent with this laptop that is uh, making our 1% lows even better. I don't know. Well, now we're seeing 97% GPU utilization because we went up to 4K, I guess. Pretty interesting. I don't think we're being a CPU bottlenecked anymore. Um, yeah, very interesting. This would definitely be a great way to play the game. Uh, 110, 39. Isn't that very similar to what we got the first time? I'd have to go back and check, but we're definitely seeing the upper limits of the GPU being utilized right now. Uh, and I love the fact that our 1% lows are so much better. This is such a better, this is the best gaming experience I've had on the game. Even though the FPS is actually a little lower, which is just, it's so counterintuitive to say that, but I mean, it's smoother, it feels smoother. And like I said, it might just be Hogwarts had a optimization update, it's hard to say. I need to start, I need to go back and test some other laptops today. Maybe the optimization update would help the other laptops too. If it doesn't help the other laptops, then we know it's something related to the GT77 that's reducing or improving the 1% lows. We need to do more investigation and research and figure it out, so. Yeah, pretty interesting. Okay, uh, let's do one side quest. Uh, we'll play at these settings. So right now we're gonna do some gameplay at DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled with no ray tracing, everything else on ultra. Let's load up to our latest save. And I believe that is this one. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. All right. Stable FPS is better than higher FPS. I agree, sir. Uh, I agree. And Sergey says, I'm disappointed the SCAR 18 is better. Well, that's why we go to test them, right? So we can figure out the truth behind the performance. Um, so we already did these quests. I um, I'm not sure which save is the most recent now. Um, so, and I, I think we we can't really say necessarily that the Scar 18 is better yet, because for example, the temperatures are better here, and our one percent lows are better. So there's advantages to the GT77, even if the average FPS is higher. And we don't know exactly the reasons why yet. Noble, Zenith wants to see for no frame gen. I will, I'll do some frame, no frame gen for part of this. Let's go ahead and go into one of these shops. And uh, we'll, with frame gen enabled, now I'll turn it off after we'll go into another shop with no frame gen. I'm here for the spellcrafts, Professor So I've start I've restarted the benchmark right I here. I thought I might be seeing you soon. I am the proprietor here. Thomas Brown. I take it you've had a conjuring lesson then. I'm afraid I haven't yet, sir. Ah, uh, but you will soon enough. It is magic at its purest, creating something out of nothing. Our temperatures are excellent. Complexity, but that is where my spell crafts How many hours am I in now? I'm about 18 hours into Hogwarts. And you could soon impress my gear score is like 250 least. and 260 That's defense and offense. To you, Mr. Barrow, and I'm hitting pretty hard. I'm playing in hard mode and I'm just killing stuff really good. I too seen it. Spellcrafts are incredibly useful for conjuring unique items like custom pieces of furniture or decorating. But I okay, so we're just gonna move past this. And we're gonna buy our stuff. Nothing like finding if you're interested. Feel free to All right, and off. let's go ahead and go to our settings. We'll turn frame gen off because I don't know some of you guys want to see that as well. So no frame generation, DLS on quality, everything on ultra, no ray tracing for this segment now. Rest of my infantry. All right, so I'm gonna restart the average FPS. Frame gen at 4K didn't give us as big of a boost. Well. It's interesting. 
We're jumping around between 60 and 80 FPS. So we need to go to Pippin's Potions, which should be over here. This is still very smooth, very playable. All right, here's Pippin's Potions. Welcome to Jay Pippin's Potions. Pardon me, sir. Oh, thank goodness. When I heard the bell, I thought you were Miss Lawang. Not that she deigns to come here. Though, I don't believe I've seen your face here before, either. It's my first time in Holtzman, actually. Still some As great I performance, know. considering no frame gen is on. Very and smooth. Sons. And this is J. Pippin's Potions. Potions for all ailments. <laughs> You'll already tell the uh, Marksman, the when are you going to show us undervolting? Tom uh, probably tomorrow. Whenever I do the next live stream with the GT77, we'll do some under uh, undervolting and benchmarking. Okay, I'm going to skip forward and we'll go to the next segment. What can I do for you today? Oh, wow. Feel free to take a look at the rest of my inventory. Is this game any good? I've I've been really enjoying this game. I think it's a really good game. Um, the details in the side quests and the storytelling is really, really phenomenal. Um, the combat system is fun. Well, hello there. Pardon me, sir. I'm here for the seeds Professor Weasley arranged for me to collect. Ah, oh, the Dittany for the new fifth year. <laughs> I take it that's you then. Merlin's beard. Starting on Wars is a This is year. this is a phenomenal it's gaming experience. The display is so bright. The speakers are good. The one thing I'll say is you wouldn't want to play on Max fans if you're using unless you're using headphones. You want to play on like balanced or silent mode. So let me try let me try showing you guys that. Let's try let's try balanced mode. So we were averaging 88 FPS before. I'm gonna restart it now. We're gonna have lower boost clocks. And the fan noise is going to come down a bit. So now we're in we're now we're in balance fan mode, which is just going to be a lot better. Uh, which is going to be a better overall experience for someone who is. Um, you know, someone who wants to have a, a more balanced audio experience, like right now the fans aren't so loud that I can't enjoy the sound of the speakers of the game, you know? Like if you're hearing a fan, it's actually, I have a, I have a side fan that's actually making more noise than the GT 77 now. I have everything. I see what you meant about not being able to pick a favorite shop. <laughs> we should walk around a bit more. Perhaps today is the day I finally pick one. We get some combat going here. I'll try. I'll try my best not to die. <laughs> So this game is a lot like Elden Ring combat in the sense that you need to use attacks with continuous dodging. Do I have any damage spells? I don't have any damage spells yet. Just got auto attack. Oh my god, now he just got demolished. Oh my gosh, Natty, you gotta dodge. You need to take the dodge tutorial.
Oh my gosh. One whack is like a quarter of your health. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's summarize what we've discovered about the GT77. Um, so sorry about the camera going out. I was in the middle of the troll battle. Didn't realize it. Um, so the GT77, uh, out of the box, we had a better score than the SCAR-18 in Cinematch R23. After we undervolt and overclock this guy, I'm expecting over 30K, Probably, I've seen as high as 37,000 with the GT77. I don't think we're probably going to get that high. I'm hoping that we get at least to 33, 34,000 during the undervolt and overclock stream session, uh, at least for a single run. A 10-minute run, I don't know what we'll get. We'll have to see. Um, for the GP performance, this is the stock out of the box performance with the GT77. It's very impressive. We're getting like 200 megahertz higher boost clock. For some reason, our FPS in Hogwarts Legacy is actually lower than the SCAR-18. I think it's either because of the memory or because the CPU power limit is lower. We're pulling like over 100 watts uh, on the SCAR-18 and one, up to 120 watts on the SCAR-18. Um, and that may be pushing our FPS lower because we're only seeing like 80, 90 watts in Hogwarts Legacy with the GT77. So raising the power limits uh, with Intel XU again may boost our performance in games like Hogwarts Legacy. So it's hard to say what the reason that we're getting lower performance. Uh, but the big thing is with the GT77, our 1% lows were excellent. We weren't experiencing any stuttering pretty much. The game was smooth at QHD and Full HD. I don't really understand the reason. Maybe Hogwarts was better optimized with their recent updates. It's hard to say. Uh, new games like this do get optimization updates more frequently than older existing games. So I'll need to do some more tests. We'll be doing more tests with other laptops very soon. Um, I will be doing an overclocking live stream with this laptop very soon. Uh, probably today or tomorrow or the, sorry, tomorrow or the next day will probably be the days I'll be doing the overclocking live stream. So be sure to subscribe and come back for that. Um, 
so I'm going to check any questions here. Raphael S., any speaker test? Yeah, let's go ahead and do a speaker test uh, before we go. And uh, artlist.io. All right. And um, so let's go ahead and get the speaker. Get ready to do a speaker test here. Getting everything positioned. Um, do, 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 uh, let's see. All right. So, speaker test. Let's go. All right, so we're going to start with uh, Roar. And I also want to check, I think they have, yeah, they have Nahimic, which affects your sound, what you get for the sound you get quite a bit. So right now it's a flat custom EQ with music as the profile preset. We'll turn it off. I'll try turning it off and on for you. Can you hear the difference? On, off, on. The sound quality, the, the quality of the speakers goes up and changes dramatically when you change the, the different profiles here. So this is something I would definitely recommend playing with if you end up getting this laptop to optimize the speaker system. Um, Ben Plan says, $5 super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, appreciate the support. Quick question for you after your summary. What are your thoughts on the Corsair DDR5 Dominator 6000 megahertz RAM? Anything better in your opinion? I'm not sure which uh, memory is the very best. I've seen uh, 6400 as an option for XMG laptops, but you also got to confirm that the laptop's going to support whatever RAM you end up buying. Okay, so that's the important thing to keep in mind. All right, so let's chest another song. Thank you so much for the donation. All right, so Half Life. Okay, so my summary of the speakers are they have very noticeable strong bass. They have pretty clear mids and highs, but I think the mids and highs could be a little bit clearer. The overall volume is very loud. Um, I think the speakers are probably like an 8.75 or maybe a 9 out of 10. Not quite as good as the Blade uh, 16 speakers. And I'm sure probably not quite as good as the Blade 18 speakers, but they're up there and they do make for very good sound as long as you don't have... Uh, fans on max fans, you can get a good gaming experience with just, you know, just raw uh, audio coming from the laptop because you have upward firing speakers on the left and right of the keyboard as well as downward firing on the left and right. So the overall volume is quite loud. It's, it's really good. Um, okay. Uh, I can't test Cravray because of uh, copyright issues. Um, yeah, the Razer speakers were a little better. I would agree. Um, the fingerprint scanner on the right, uh, I did not test it, but let me go ahead and see if I can just lock it and then you can just can see it, right? So there you go. I just did it. So using the fingerprint sensor, logging in instantly. Uh, so far it's worked every time I've tried to use it. So that's good. Um, the keyboard layout, I want to talk about that for a minute.
So this keyboard layout, um, I love the spacing of the general keyboard. It feels extremely excellent to type on. Have a listen to the t t typing sound. Sorry, I ended up typing, pressing the buttons. Um, I also really love this feature, check this out. So on the keyboard, arrow keys, you can enable and disable a crosshair. The crosshair button is just a hot key right here. Um, you see that right here? You just press FN and then the down arrow, and then you get a crosshair to pop up on the screen. So it's very easy to have your crosshair uh, when you want it or you don't want it. Um, I love that. and. Um, which can, that can help give you a bit of an advantage in certain types of games. Um, you can also pause and play music with this pause and play left arrow button. So you have a little bit of media control built in and it's very easy to press these with the FN button being right next to the arrow keys. You can just use, you know, just like that and you got it activated, whatever. So it's really good. Um, the touchpad I would also say is very nice. It's got a nice click to it. And it's, it's very tactile. I like the click a little better than the blade click, but it's just not quite as big of a surface area. And that's okay. I think this is an excellent touchpad overall. I really like the keyboard and uh, setup here. The only thing is the arrow keys are a little bit smaller than I would like. They're not quite full size. And so is the number pad. These keys are a little close together, which makes a little bit of getting used to for the keyboard. But overall, the keyboard is phenomenal. It's got great feel. The speakers are good. The display is phenomenal. Just not great for eSports. Um, and uh, the display is just a fun, just a perfect display for casual gaming. So you want something that's colorful, that's vibrant, that's got a decent response rate and is very smooth to look at. This is, this is fantastic. Um, and it's just super freaking bright. Um, okay, so uh, checking real quick, all right. Okay, I have a question. I can't figure out how come many websites like Verge, PC Gamer, Hot Hardware, IGN got to review the Blade 409016 and big tech, like, big tech YouTubers like yourself have not. So um, the still fact is companies like Razer and other manufacturers have to prioritize review units in some manner or form. And usually it comes down to like uh, how they how they perceive the value and your influence in the overall market. Uh, and quite frankly, my value as, a, as an influencer and tech YouTuber was pretty low at the start of the year because I hadn't really been making very many videos in a while. And now that I'm making tons of videos and I'm getting a lot of views, it's gonna go up a lot. And I'm gonna be able to get uh, review units in from companies like Razer way more easily in the future. As a matter of fact, Asus is sending me a laptop. They, they agreed to send me a laptop today, the Zephyrus Duo 16. So, wahoo, um, it's beginning. I'll ha I won't have to buy all as many laptops uh, if I can get manufacturers to send me units more and more often. But, um, but yeah, I'll still have to buy some laptops because some, sometimes manufacturers don't want to send out specific configurations that people want to test. Um, they might send you only the highest end or only the lowest end. And I want to test like a middle level spec. I have to buy that to be able to review that. So uh, Britt Allen says uh, four speakers. That's correct. I believe this is a four speaker system. Um, I tuned in late. How's the screen? I did a full display test. I recommend going back and checking that out. The display is awesome. Um, really good. It's just not perfect for esports. If you're an esports Twitch gamer, I wouldn't recommend it because it does have a slight bit of um, ghosting to it, and it's a slower response rate display. So a 240 hertz QHD is going to be better for esports, like noticeably better. Um, that's still a, it. Still is a good display, and, and you can play esports on it. It's just not going to be quite as responsive as the better displays out there. Um, okay. All right. I think. That's it for this live stream, guys. Uh, be tuning in again later this week. The goal is to be able to uh, overclock this guy for the CPU and GPU. So if you haven't subscribed yet and hit that notification bell, you'll want to do that if you want to be able to catch it live um, and be able to ask questions or whatever. And I'll be checking the chat. Uh, I'll be checking the comments after the stream's done as well, of course. So feel free to stop by uh, and ask any questions in, in the comment section. And I'll try to answer as many as I can Sometimes I can't get around to answering all of them, but I answer like dozens of comments every day. So yeah, 
Sweet. Um, okay, it looks like a few more questions and then we'll end the stream. Okay, thoughts on the Stealth from Best Buy. In general, I wouldn't recommend a Stealth because it's not that much thinner and lighter than a full power laptop. So in general, I'd recommend getting, you know, I would just recommend getting a full power laptop and that's like a, a tenth of an inch thicker and you just get better performance. Um, that said, the Stealth is not a bad laptop. You're going to be able to play great games on it. It's just not going to quite be the most optimal performance for your dollar um, or performance for your weight, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Linchester says, swap out the RAM on the GT77 and retest Hogwarts. That's a great question, and I might end up doing that. We'll see. I'm going to see if the raising the power limit on the CPU helps first. That'd be the first thing I want to test. It's a lot less work than changing out the RAM. Um, but I do have these other laptops here that have some faster RAM, so I could test some faster RAM in the GT77. Um, when will there be a stream with the Blade 18? I believe the Blade 18 came in the mail today, actually, while I was doing uh, prep for this live stream. So I would expect a Blade 18 live stream, hopefully later this week or maybe sometime this weekend. Um, yeah, I'm actually really excited about the Blade 18. That one, like I said, might be my laptop for this year. We'll see. Um, okay, that's it for the live stream, guys. Thanks so much for everyone that became a member uh, of the channel. And uh, if you do become a member after the stream is done, be sure to email me so I can add you to the list in the right order. Because of the, yeah, becoming a member gives you access to potentially buying review units that I, uh, the review laptops that I buy and then I end up reselling. So uh, you'll get top priority for buying those laptops. Okay, peace out everyone. I'll see you in the next one.